please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. So congratulations on getting access to this video course where I am going to walk you through on how to build your list virally on autopilot after you have set everything up. All right, so this is video number one, which is the introduction, and I'm gonna give you a quick overview of this video course so you know exactly what to expect, and that way all the missing pieces of the puzzle are able to be placed together once you know exactly what to expect. Now, before I jump right in, I wanna talk about mindset, because a lot of times when it comes to building your list, a lot of people think, I wanna get the biggest list as I can. Now. I really don't want you to think about the biggest list. I really want you to think about is conversions. And what I mean by that is having a list that actually converts into sales. Now there are different types of lists, which I'll talk about in video number one, but really focus on conversions, not how big your list is, if that makes sense. Now let's talk about a quick overview of the video course so that you can kind of get a bird's eye view of what's inside. So obviously this is video number one, video number two, it, we're gonna talk about the different types of customer lists. There are actually two major types and I'll talk about that. And we're really gonna focus on one particular type. Video number three, we're gonna talk about the highest converting list and how it works. So we're gonna basically build upon each other. So make sure that you watch all the videos step-by-step -step videos one through nine. And of course, video number four, we're gonna talk about the formula for the high value thank you offers, which fits into the overall formula. And video number five, we're gonna talk about finding vendors to piggyback on. Video number six, we're gonna talk about vendor and buyer analysis. Number seven, we're gonna talk about creating quality thank you offers. And of course, video number eight, we're gonna talk about building a list. So after everything we've talked about in the previous areas, we're gonna talk about actual building the list as far as vendors go. And as you're waiting for vendors to say yes, we will talk about building a list as an affiliate for video number nine. All right, so now that you kind of understand the basics, let's jump right in and talk about the different types of lists. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Okay, so welcome back. This is video number two, and we're gonna talk about the two different types of customer lists. Now, while we're focusing on just one particular path, I really wanna talk about two major types of lists because I really want you to get into that mindset of understanding why there are two different lists and why we are really focusing on just one particular one. So the two major ones are the free list versus the customer list. So a free list, let me explain the differences. A free list simply means that the people that are subscribed to your list have not purchased a product. So if you kind of imagine if you get onto a landing page or a squeeze page and they're asking for your name and your email and that's it, you're not buying anything. That is basically what a free list is. Now, typically these lists are a little bit harder to convert because people do not know you. They have not really put their trust and faith in you. You know, if somebody subscribes and they've purchased from you before, that would be consistent of more of a customer type subscriber. But we're talking about people that don't know you, they've subscribed, they've gotten something for free, and that's it. So in this case, you kind of have to push quantity of lists. Instead of focusing on quality and conversions, you really have to focus on numbers. So it's a numbers game. So in instead of having a list of, let's say, 100 buyers, you have to have a list of a thousand or a couple thousand. Now, the second type of list is a buyer's list. This means that the subscriber on the list have actually purchased a product. So say for example, somebody lands on your sales page, you're selling them 
something like a $7 or $17 item or whatever price point it is. They buy it or add it to your list. So that is basically a buyer's list. Now, these types of lists tend to be very high converting because they have proven that they are serious enough to whip out their wallets or their credit cards and buy a product. So think about it. Which really would, would you like to have? Would you rather have the free list or would you rather have the customer list? So that really depends on what you're selling, but the majority of times you will want the buyer's list. And that's really what we're going to be focusing on in this particular video course. Now the question begs, how do you build a viral buyer's list without selling a product? Because selling a product that takes time and that's not necessarily getting it to build virally and getting other people to build it for you. Now that is the secret behind this method is you get other people to actually build the list for you. Yes, it does take time and yes, there is some work involved, but this is the closest thing to getting to that. So with that said, let's move on to video number three. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Okay. So welcome back. This is video number three, and we're going to talk about the highest converting list and how it works. So we talked about in the previous video that this is the buyer's list. A list of a hundred people is worth way more than a list of 2000 free subscribers. So think about it because these are people who actually know you, they have purchased a product, somebody else's product, but they still know you and they have seen you on the thank you page. Now I'm going to talk more about the formula, how it works and all that in just a minute. So you'll be able to see everything in a bird's eye view. So how do you build a list without selling a product? That doesn't really make sense, does it? But after I show you, this will definitely make more sense. So the way you do this is by piggybacking on people with products. So vendors, and here's how this mind map flows. Basically, this is how it works. Basically somebody purchases a product from a vendor and I'll give you an example in just a minute but they purchase that product and it's not you or anything. It's a vendor and you've worked out a deal with that vendor who is selling something very, very specific. So in other words, if you approach somebody who is selling, let's say for example, uh, some sort of recipe book, then you might want to sell something related to them, not directly in competition with them, but specifically related so that it actually helps that person. So after you have done this, the, you basically will have some sort of high value product that you're offering to that vendor's customers. And they, the vendor has agreed to place your high value product to give it to their customers for free on their thank you page. So think about it. If somebody lands on the vendor's thank you page, they are ready to download the product that they just purchased, right? And they also see your high value product as well. So basically they are getting the first impression of after I purchase, I see the vendor's product and I see your high value product. So what does that do when they're in that buying mode, they see your, the vendor and they see your name or your brand. So on the vendors, thank you page, basically you deliver your high value product. It's not the same as a lead magnet or anything like that. This is a super high value product that somebody is actually willing to pay for. You're just giving it away for free and they subscribe and you deliver the goods. Now you don't necessarily get a monetary exchange in this case, but in this case, it's a win-win situation for the vendor and the buyer. Now, the reality is that no vendor out there will be willing to share their list with you by all means. I will say that upfront, no vendor out there is going to share their list with you. So how do you overcome this? How do you go about this? 
And how do you do this? Well, you must create what we call a high value offer. So in this case, this is this right here. So that's basically how that formula works. Now, I'm going to basically show you more in depth how this works, but all that means is that your focus is really building a very high value offer that the vendor is willing to put on their thank you page. So in other words, in order to get the vendor to say yes, you really have to focus on the formula of building high value thank you offers, which we'll, we're going to talk about right now in video number four. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome back to video number four. And we are going to discuss the formula for developing high value thank you offers, or in other words, high value offers that are being placed on the thank you page. So you now know the general formula of how this works. Basically, we've worked with the vendor. The vendor has decided to place our high value offer on their thank you page. And basically they're going to place the subscription form or a link that goes to your subscription form and people fill that out. Now, the reason why this works is because if you build something that is not directly in competition, but is somewhat related to what they are offering, then the customer just bought what they were expecting, but they got something so much greater, which is what you're offering. So obviously in this case, you have to build something very, very tightly focused, not in direct competition, but tightly focused. So in other words, don't approach a vendor who is in direct competition with you or anything like that, because as a vendor, a lot of times we think, okay, if I'm going to share my list with you, or I'm going to give something to you, then in your selling the exact same thing as me, then you're just going to steal my list. So you really have to think about how you can offer something of value, but not in direct competition, if that makes sense. So to make this work, you really need to break it into parts. And here's what I mean by that. Now we need you to understand how to get the vendors to say yes, because many will say no. So I really want you to put yourself aside here because I'm probably sure that you're super excited about building a list, getting other people to build a list. And it's super easy to forget about the buyer and the vendor. So put yourself aside for just a moment and let's discuss. So I want you to put yourself in your vendor's shoes because this is actually very crucial. So I want you to imagine just for a second, imagine that there is a vendor who is selling a weight loss book for $17. What if you came along and you created a high value product that was related? So that book talks about weight loss, maybe uh, weight type loss, cardio exercises and, and all that. But they, they talk nothing about food or diet or anything like that. So you come along and you find these vendors that are really focused on this particular aspect or anything that is not related to food. Obviously, if you approach a vendor who is selling a recipe on weight loss, they're more likely to say, oh, no, definitely not. Heck no. You know, they're definitely not going to accept that because it's just too close to what they're selling. So in this case, perhaps because their book is about weight loss and weight loss training exercises, you can perhaps create a high value product related indirectly that is discussing about food recipes for weight loss. And let's say you do that. And what you end up is you create a book or a video that is worth more than their book. So in this case, you can set the recipe book up for sale on an actual sales page for $27. Somebody is selling a $17 book or something lower. Basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that your high value product is either double or a little bit more money than what they are selling. And the reason being is because 
it's going to get the vendor to more likely say yes. Now, it's got to be realistic. If you're offering something of low value and just bumping up the price, that's not going to work anyways. So yes, as you can see, it does take a little bit more time to actually go through this process, but it's going to be well worth it in the end. Because if you can find, let's say, for example, 10 different vendors who are selling a weight loss book, but they have nothing related to food, then you can approach those 10 or 20 or 30 or so forth. Really focus on a few right now and just get them to say yes, and then approach other people and say, hey, this person said yes, so forth and, and blah, blah, blah. So that's what you want to do. And now I really want you to think about the vendor. So let's say, for example, if you offered your product up for free to their buyers, wouldn't their buyers love them for just getting you to work out a deal? Yes, that's going to be a win-win situation for them and for you. Now, that is only if the case if the book you're providing is of high value. If it's low value and you have low quality, you're just going to get a bunch of no's. In fact, I've seen, you know, many people approach us, for example, and they want to offer something and it is super low value with a bumped up price. So you want to make sure that you have high value, a high value sales page and a thank you page. If, if you're not able to create one yourself, then get a professional to do it for you. Because you want to make sure that everything looks super professional. Everything is high value because as a vendor, we all think the same. And what we think is, I want to provide the best to my list. If anything is, you know, not really good, I'm going to say no. So that's what you really have to think about a vendor. And just think about yourself as a vendor as well. Put yourself in their shoes. Now, obviously, different niches are different. So you have to think about that particular niche. You have to kind of analyze the vendor and the buyer, which we'll talk about later. Now, what you want to do is offer their buyers your paid book, your paid video course, your paid product or service for free in exchange for them adding this offer to their thank you page. And we discussed why. And that was because why? Because the vendor is sending the buyers to that page to get the download information. So think about it really carefully. If they purchase the product that is related to weight loss and they see a recipe book that is directly related, they are more likely to say yes. Thank you vendor, whoever you are and thank you. Now, this is why it works because people land on the thank you page. They remember the vendor, they remember you. So the point of contact has already been created. Even though they haven't purchased from you directly, they have created this connection with you, which is stronger than somebody just subscribing and getting a free book. All right. So does that make sense? Basically, they are a proven buyer and they're going to remember you as well. So this becomes what we call a warm buyers list. Cold list means that they don't know you at all. They don't know who you are. They just subscribe to your list. They don't know what you can offer to them. So they have that connection. They, they know you basically. That's what that means. So as long as you build that relationship up and you constantly give them high value materials related to weight loss, they'll buy from you. And this is how the formula works. And it's very simple as you can see. So really what it comes down to is most of your time will be focused on analyzing the vendor and buyer and then creating a high value product that you know they are already buying out on the internet, but you just produce something of more high value. So you see how you are leveraging other vendors. If you can get one vendor, to put this on their thank you page. And even if you're getting, you know, a few subscribers a day, those are actually building your customer base list. So imagine getting 10, if you're getting three or five, you know, subscribes from each vendor, you could 
have anywhere from 10 or 50 different people coming to your list every single day. And these are people that are customers. So soon you will have a list of a hundred people and these hundred people will convert at a higher rate as long as you provide them with high value. So this is basically how this works. And the formula is pretty simple. So as a recap, this is what it looks like. You create a high value offer. You get the buyers to sign up on your subscription form to get them to the thank you page. And that's it. They will thank you. They will th thank the vendor. And that's it. So with that said, let's move on and uh, let's find some vendors to piggyback on. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. All right, so welcome back. This is video number five. We're going to talk about finding vendors to piggyback on. Now, you want to ensure that your list is high quality too. And what I mean by that is you don't want to approach every single vendor out there because some vendors are actually selling very low quality products. And guess what? You're just going to get low quality subscribers. And that doesn't always mean the case, but that typically if you look at certain vendors, you'll notice that they attract a certain type of person. So you want to make sure that you attract the customer that can resonate with them, but also resonate with you. If they're the type of person that are looking for high quality material and they're willing to pay for high quality material, that's the type of person that you want on your list. But if they're building a subscriber list or customer list a fill with people who are demanding, they want to pay less, but they demand more, then you're going to end up building a list of people like that. So a lot of times we don't think about that psychology behind a building a list is it's just about building a massive list. All right. So you want to make sure not only that, but that the vendor is actually getting sales and you want to look at some analysis and do your due diligence beforehand. And you might even want to approach them say, Hey, I'm working on a product right now and was wondering if you're interested. So you can also gain interest from that and just build a relationship from that vendor. Another good way of doing it is buying the vendor's product, buying their product and then saying, Hey, I got to, I noticed that this product is all about this. I'm actually working on a product right now that is not direct competition with you, but it's something that I feel would actually help your list. So I will say not all vendors will say yes on the spot, but if you have a relationship with them and it's not this, you know, you're begging them or anything like that, but a genuine relationship with them, they're more likely to say yes, because there is somewhat of a relationship building involved. So you want to make sure that the vendors are getting sales and high quality. And there are several sites that you can use to find these vendors. So keeping that in mind, you want to look specifically at sites that sell goods, specifically digital goods. If you are selling a digital book, a digital video course, or something digital or intangible, you could technically look at sites like amazon.com. But most of those are selling through Amazon and are physical goods. Now that doesn't mean that you can't maybe even convert your product into some sort of physical good. You could approach it that way as well, but you could use amazon.com digital like Kindle. And if you do enough research, you typically can find the author of the book or the product and do a little research on the internet to find them on the internet. And if they are building a list or selling something on the internet, that is a good indication as well. So you can technically use amazon.com indirectly to find people. You can use sites like clickbank.com to find vendors. And this is a great site to go to because clickbank.com will actually show you stats of how well the vendor's product is selling. And the great thing about this is it really encompasses many different niches, everything from wealth to religion, to 
uh, different types of broad spectrums of niches and all that. Now, there is another site called jvzoo.com, but keep in mind jvzoo.com specifically targets primarily businesses, marketers, so business to business type lists. So let's go ahead and take a look at these sites and that way you can get a better idea of how to find vendors to piggyback on. So the purpose of this exercise is to merely figure out who the vendors are, what they're doing, and kind of get an idea of are they a good vendor to approach. Now there is no guarantee whatsoever on whether the vendor will say yes, but I'm showing you as much as possible to do your due diligence and to find one, and then of course create a high value offer that they are going to most likely be very, very interested in. So I would highly recommend the first site being clickbank.com, as you can see here, clickbank.com. And if you go straight away to the affiliate marketplace, we are able to see the actual vendors that are going to be categorized depending on the, the niche, the sub niche, and all of that. Now, if you want to scroll down and look through here, that's fine. Uh, but we recommend that you go straight away to the advanced search or the search bar here. And then of course you type in that particular vendor. So in this case, let's say for example, that we are trying to find vendors that are going to talk about lowering in cholesterol. So let's type in cholesterol here. And as we can see, there are 126 products out there, which means there's 126 vendors that are selling a product related to lowering cholesterol. Now, the nice thing about ClickBank is it gives you some data about whether the product is selling or not. So remember I said you want to find vendors that are actually selling products that actually are doing well. That doesn't mean that you approach somebody who isn't, doesn't have good data, doesn't necessarily mean they aren't doing well, but you are trying to do enough due diligence so that you pick the right vendor. So as you can see, we see these and these are related to the keyword that we searched, but ClickBank also allows you to do a search by popularity, average sale, initial sale, and gravity. Now, gravity is a good detection on whether a vendor is doing well or not. It basically tells us that the affiliates that are promoting this vendor's product, they are actually making sales. So if we scroll down here, we can see that this one has 192.31. Of course, it's related to diabetes, so we need to make sure that we are looking at something that is related but this is a good indication that the product is doing well. And some of these products have recurring, which means that the customer is not just paying a one-time fee, that they are paying it on and on and on, on a monthly, on a quarterly, depending on what the vendor chooses on, a, on an ongoing basis. And that's typically good because that tells us that uh, their customers are loyal and they're constantly paying and that could mean that if they get on your list, then you could open up maybe a monthly site. So that's just something to kind of get a better idea if, let's say for example, your high value offer is an offer to get somebody into a monthly site. So you see what I'm saying here? Uh, there are many different variables here and vendors have many indications that they are good to you know build your list, in different respects. So building your list, getting somebody to your list that's a one-time person or a monthly person. Okay, so scroll down, make sure you find somebody and let's say, let's just say diabetes. And let's just go ahead and click on this person's page. So we can kind of get a better idea of what they are all about. So obviously in this case, uh, they're talking about you know type 2 diabetes uh, how to lower your you know high blood sugar and all of that you want to scroll down and you want to watch the video and you want to make sure that it's actually aligned with what you are selling because you got to remember that they are attracting a certain type of person so the person watching this video in this case 
I'm hoping that I'm going to buy something that is going to help me with my type 2 diabetes and all that. So once they, all, they land on the thank you page, and if what you are offering, maybe it's a recipe book or something related to lowering blood sugar, then that's going to pique the customer's interest, right? Obviously, no vendor is going to do this, but if they give you something unrelated to diabetes and they land on that, they're not going to be interested in what you're offering. In fact, they're going to look at you and they're going to look at the vendor and question if they're selling something legit. So you have to think about it from that standpoint as well. The vendor, when they look at your high value offer, they're going to think, is this going to help me or is this not going to help me? So you really have to think about it from the vendor's point of view and the buyer's point of view. And we'll talk more about that later on. But for now, this is how you find vendors. Now we could take it one step further and we could try to see if this person might have a blog or anything else. So let's see, Dr. Info. So what we could do is we can see that these are the doctors obviously that are connected to this, but we could actually Google their names and try to figure out if they have a blog, are they building a list and all that kind of stuff. So it's not just do they have a viable product, but do they have, are they building a list out in the open that is not included on the sales page? Because if they are, that might be a good sign because if it converts well on the thank you page, they might be more inclined to actually promote it to their other lists. All right, you see what I'm saying here? So start with clickbank.com, try to do some research as far as finding vendors this way by looking at gravity, by making sure the product is actually aligned with your product. So that's a good way to come to clickbank.com. Another site, of course, is amazon.com. Now, Amazon mainly sells physical products, but you still can gain a lot of insight from amazon.com. So for example, even though it's from Amazon, some of these authors actually have their own blogs, have their own products out in the open on the internet. So if they're doing well on Amazon, most likely that means they are doing well as well on the internet in the World Wide Web. So let's say for example, uh, we'll do something like, um, like WordPress, or actually we'll do lose weight. And let's just do some research on this. So we're looking for Kindle books. Um, I wouldn't really look specifically for physical products, so I would look under Kindle. So let's add Kindle, or you can go to the Kindle department, that's fine too. But you go here, we're gonna sort by customer reviews. And let me see if I can narrow it down a little bit. So for example, this person right here has about 602. That's a good amount. 541. 167. So what I recommend you do in this case is, okay, they're obviously selling a lot. If they have this many reviews, unless they're fake, and there's a good way to detect that by actually looking at the reviews. But if they have this many reviews, typically one out of 20, one out of 30, even sometimes one out of 100 people will re leave reviews. So that means they have a lot of sales. Now, the big question is, do these people actually have maybe a membership site or another site that is located not on amazon.com? So this lady is named Jenny Allen. So what I like to do is typically look at their author page and see if I can dig up a little bit more information. So this person, this lady is named Jenny Allen. I don't know if she's a celebrity. I don't know if she is an information product creator. I don't know, but we don't know until we actually take a look. So as we can see, she's got blog posts. So let's just see if we can dig a little bit further here. So 
So that's interesting. So you can see she has a site. And uh, let's see this blog. I think the question is, are these her blog posts or are these somebody else's blog posts? So they're all coming from a site called Formulated Fitness. And it looks like it's the same guy's name. It's not Jenny Allen, but it is Joseph. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to look through and see if they're selling another product. So this could be her business partner in this case. So basically what you're trying to do is follow the breadcrumbs. So in this case, I'll do a little more research on Joseph Solidum and see what we get. Formulated Fitness. So it looks like they own a site called Formulated Fitness, and that's that's correct. So Formulated Fitness, we can see Jelly, Jenny Allen is on that picture. They have 18,000 likes. We can do go further and see if they're selling products, video courses, or anything, any other products that are not connected to Amazon. So a lot of people don't think about this, that just because somebody's selling on Amazon, Typically, you cannot, you know, work with a vendor to with with Amazon because Amazon's very controlled. But beyond Amazon, if you look beyond that, you can actually see that some people are selling products beyond that. So this is a good way to kind of use Amazon as an indication that somebody actually is converting. And if they're converting, then you can actually go beyond that. Does that make sense? And Hopefully that gives you an eye-opening experience into what you could potentially do because Amazon is so broad that it pretty much fills so many different niches. So obviously the third place that you can find vendors is of course a place called jvzoo.com. Now jvzoo is primarily vendors related to business. So Amazon and ClickBank pretty much fill the non-business related type areas. Now they do have some business, but JVZoo is just for business. So I wanna make that note there. Now they do have some other products you might find, but for majority, it is mainly for business. Now you do need an account to do this. So you need to go to jvzoo.com, create an account and as an affiliate. And then if you go to the top and you click on affiliates, and click find products, you will be directed to this page where you'll be able to find digital products to promote. Now, obviously in this case, we're looking for vendors, but this gives us some good data to get an idea of what products are being sold, how much the conversion rate, the EPC, in other words, the earnings per click, and the refund rate. So if you got a product that is doing really well, but yet they have like a 10, 25% refund rate or above, then you might want to think carefully because if you think about it, if they are getting, let's say a 25 to 30% refund rate, the type of person that lands on their product may be a type of person that refunds all the time. And you don't really want to build a list of people like that especially if they're going to buy your product, download it, and then refund it. So that's something else. You really you really got to think about the type of person, which we'll talk more about later. But for now, this is a good place to go. And of course, at the top, under keyword, you can do a search for a product. So let's say, for example, that we're looking for a product that's related to WordPress. And you can do a search. You can go through here and look at the products. And if you click on the product itself, It'll give you a better idea of, you know, the vendor and all of that and their history. So it gives you a good idea about that. But like I said, follow the breadcrumbs, just like Amazon. Look at the seller, which is, it says the product name by this name of the product owner. So you can scroll down and you can do some research on these authors, just like I did with Amazon and see, look at the product, make sure that this is something that is related to your product and think about the type of buyer that it would attract and whether it fits your product 
whether the buyer would be high quality or not, and just find the vendors that way. All right, so with that said, let's move on to the next video. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome back. This is video number six, and this is the vendor and buyer analysis. We briefly touched base on this in the previous video, but I really want to dive deeper. And the purpose of this particular video is to show you how to kind of get it into the minds of the vendor and into the minds of the buyer so that you can get more yeses. And then of course the buyer is going to think, wow, this is something that I really, really want that you are offering to me. And now that I see your offer on the thank you page, not only do I believe you, but I am looking to actually buy more from you. So that's kind of what we want people to get into the mindset of. So as I said, once you find a niche, it's really time to analyze the deepest, deepest desires, the problems that they face, the reasons why they buy and all that. All right. So, First things first, I want to ask you a few questions and then we are going to be using a free tool that you can use to dive deeper into your niche. So first question is what does the vendor want in terms of why and what they want to do, how they want to do it as far as making their buyers happy. So in other words, when a vendor sees something, they either think, well, this is something that my buyers definitely don't want, or this is something that my buyers really, really want. And I want to either go out, I want to make a deal with another vendor and make a special deal for my buyers. All right. So this is how you can get more vendors to say yes. If you only understand their point of view, I see this time and time again, and even Let's say, for example, joint venture marketing. People have this great product. They approach a vendor and they hope that the vendor will say yes. But unless you really know why the vendor is going to say yes or no, then you are either going to have a higher chance of no's or if you get it right, you'll have a higher chance of them either saying yes or highly likely. All right. And now in terms of what the buyer wants, we need to figure out what problems do these buyers face, perhaps even uh, what do they want to buy, what topics interest them, what topics don't interest them, and what are the demographics, what does this buyer look like, maybe this buyer is a very specific demographic, it's very specific type of person, is it a male, is it a female, uh, what do they like, what do they don't like, and all that. If you know that, then when it comes to creating a high value offer that you can place on the vendor's thank you page, it's going to be much, much easier. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we call Facebook's demographic analysis tool, which is called Facebook audience insights. Okay. So we're going to be using a tool called Facebook audience insights, and that is located at www.facebook.com slash ads slash audience dash insights. Now, if you ever forget that URL or you don't feel like entering that in, you can simply go to google.com and type in Facebook audience insights, and you will get the URL up here. Now, obviously you will need to have a facebook.com account to log in and you will get in and you will see this. Now, the nice thing about Facebook audience insights is it is a tool that Facebook gives you access to for free. And this free tool allows you to get in the minds of your buyers and then actually see their likes, their dislikes, their demographics is the majority male is the majority female, uh, what age range they are, their household, purchases or activities, their purchases, are they married, are they single and all that. Now, the reason why you want to know this information is it gives you a better perspective of the buyer. All right. So as we dive deeper into it, you'll see what I mean. 
Now, by default, it will choose your country. So in this case, I am pinpointing the United States. But if you are coming from a different country, typically it'll choose that for you. But of course, you don't have to choose your country. You can choose a different country if you want to do that. So I can X out of this and choose, for example, Australia or Canada or United Kingdom. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Now, you can also choose the age and gender, but typically I leave this blank because I just am interested specifically on the interest. And based upon the interest, it'll tell you more data about that particular demographic. So let's say, for example, that we are going to focus on cholesterol. So let's just type in cholesterol here. And if we scroll back to the top, we can see demographics. Now, this is interesting. It says 79% of women are searching for information related to cholesterol. Now, that doesn't tell us anything right now. All we're doing is just gathering information. So 79%, we can see that the majority is in the bracket of 55 to 64. Now, 21% of men we can see that it is starting at 35, but the majority is about 45 to 54 or 45 to 64. So these two right here. Now, the nice thing about Facebook Audience Insights is you can click, literally click on one of these and it'll, it'll hone in on that particular age group or gender. Now, as you can see, this is 79% women, 21% men, but if we look at it on Facebook alone, we can see that 54% of all on Facebook and 46 on Facebook. So it's about 50-50 equivalent majority, of course, are women that are at least searching for related items to cholesterol. Now, if we scroll down here, you can even see lifestyle. So the people that are searching for cholesterol, they're also searching for these types of other subject matters. We can see that much of them are married, much of them have college degrees, so they are educated in a certain sense, and they have job titles. Many of them are nurses, legal, education, management, social services. So that kind of paints a picture. So what you're trying to do is you're simply trying to paint a picture of who this could be. So page likes, what kind of pages do they like? So a lot of health and beauty, magazine, company, location, where are they located? Top cities, top countries, top languages, the activities, how active are they? So we can see much of them, we can see they use desktop, but m most of them are using mobile phones. And a lot of page likes, they're clicking ads, household income, we can see their purchase behavior, and all of that. So what, it, what this is simply doing is it's painting a picture of who that might look like. So in your mind, you might begin to think, okay, if that is this person, woman, older woman, begin to think about their lifestyle, begin to think about, you know, what is it that they are struggling with? What is it that is keeping them up at night? Is it health? Is it, in this case, it's cholesterol could be. It could be their cholesterol. It could be even their husband's cholesterol, you know? So really trying to think about what is in their minds. That's cholesterol. We can type in something else, say for example, weightlifting. So obviously Olympic weightlifting, we can see the majority of them are male. So especially between this one here. Now, if we click on here, what this does is it hones in specifically on this age group, male, and it allows you to see exactly what they like, what they don't like, their lifestyle, their relationship status. We can see a lot of singles, some married. They do have college, a lot of military, veterans. So you kind of kind of paint a picture here, right? So painting that picture allows you to see what they like, what they don't like, 
and how you can create your high value offer better and you're able to actually gear it towards that person. So now that you know how to kind of dive in and analyze the buyer, which then if you make the buyer happy, you will make the vendor happy. So it's a re it really comes down to basically a domino effect. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome back. This is video number seven, creating high quality thank you offers. So after you have researched your niche and you've analyzed the vendors and the buyer's desires, it's time to create a high value offer. So you're going to pretty much take everything that you have taken notes upon and analyzed and figured out and simply create a product, an ebook, a video course, whatever that might be. Now, really what it comes down to is either you have more money or more time. And what I mean by that is if you have more money to spend and invest in your business, then I would highly recommend that you outsource this process to an expert, an expert writer, an expert video course creator, or somebody else who is able to simply write about the subject matter. And that way you can focus primarily on finding vendors who will say yes. Now, if you do not have as much money to invest in the business, and if that is the case, then you will need to spend more time. In other words, you'll need to spend more time creating the high value offer yourself. So either way, I'm going to show you different routes that you can take. So the secret is from video number five, where we talk briefly about finding vendors to piggyback on. And in doing so, we were able to study the vendors and a niche and you should know different topics that you can create a high value product on. Remember, it's not about creating something that the vendor has already created. It's by creating something of high value that is not in direct competition, but is related in some sort of fashion, whereas the vendor will actually say yes. So once you have decided upon that and you have taken notes and if you haven't, Feel free to go back and do so. Next, what you want to do is you want to kind of choose a medium, meaning what are you going to provide as far as the value goes? Is it going to be in the form of a report, an ebook, an audiobook, a video course, or a webinar? What is that going to be in the form of? Because knowing that is crucial because if you know what that is, you will be able to find out who you will need to hire or what you need to do to get that created. So like I said, if you have more time, you can do it yourself, but we recommend that you actually outsource this process because this process will take time. You know, creating an ebook, you need to create an outline, create a report, same thing. So if you can kind of get an idea of what this particular buyer likes, what they don't like, and really hone in on that. And what you want to do is you want to create an outline. Now you can take a look at other eBooks, other reports, other audio books that are similar, not necessarily wanting to copy it, but to get an idea of how it's laid out, you can even look at the reviews and take a look at the negative reviews and see what people are complaining about as far as maybe this book or report or course does not contain something. So you can simply take that and put it into your product. That's a great way to take what customers are saying and what they are not seeing in that product and making your product better. So, while yes, it does cost money to outsource, it allows you more time to actually spend on the marketing side, getting vendors, finding them and trying to get them to say yes, because that process does take a lot of time. So here's how 
to outsource this process if you want to find an expert and get somebody else to do it for you so that you can speed this process up. Because yes, this is a business and businesses do take time to run and you want to try to outsource as much as possible so that you can grow your company. Otherwise, you will spend too much time invested in side of your company and working inside of your company that you will not bring in a lot of profit. So let's go ahead and I'll show you where to outsource these mediums. Okay, so before I show you how to outsource things and how to do it correctly, I know a lot of people will say, well, I don't have money to invest into my business to outsource this process and I want to learn how to do it myself. That's fine and all and I'm not going to teach you how to do that in this particular course because teaching you how to write an ebook or teaching you how to create a video course is a very complex thing to do. That can be done in a different video course. Now the reason why I tell people always to try to outsource these processes is because you have writers who are gifted in writing. You have people who are gifted in creating videos. You want to leverage those people's skill sets to produce the best quality product as much as possible. And this is a business. So you are going to have to invest in your business. So me personally, I would say go out and find somebody who is an expert in writing, who is an expert in video creation and let them do the work. But before you can get them to create a high quality product and use their skill set, you have to create an outline. All right. So let me show you how to briefly create a very quick and easy outline. Now, obviously, I've opened up Notepad. You don't have to open up Notepad. You can open up anything you want, but I like to write down the purpose. So what I've done in the past is I've done some research about the buyers. The vendors obviously just care about the buyers and want to make sure that the buyers are going to be happy. So in this case, let's say, for example, that I am going to approach vendors that are related to some product niche that deals with like weight loss. So the purpose of my high value offer is I am going to offer a, perhaps a recipe book or something related to weight loss, maybe something like diet. It doesn't have to be necessarily re recipes. It can be, but it can be a doorway into something else. So what do I mean by that? Well, this offer could be a high value offer. And maybe I offer this product and the purpose of this is to maybe educate people about diet and foods. And maybe it gives them a couple recipes. But ultimately in that product, my goal is to probably ultimately try to sell more recipes. So maybe I want to get them into a monthly membership site down the road. So it gives them a taste now, but it actually builds the list and it helps you get them through the doors. So my ultimate goal here is to get them to join my membership site or get them to buy another product that is related to maybe recipes, more recipes. So given that is the case, what is my ebook or video course or whatever, what is it going to be? Well, now that I have a strategy here and I have a direction of what purpose it's going to be, uh, how do I educate people about diet and foods? Well, obviously you're going to know better, but you need to give the writer or the video course creator some sort of guideline. Now, if you don't want to create all the content from scratch and you want to create a video course, typically what you want to do is you want to hire a writer. Now, most writers can go out and do some research 
and find information and they'll be able to write a report or an ebook. But before they can do that, you have to create an outline. So in this case, we can educate people about diet and foods. So as far as weight loss goes, what are the, we can type in what are the top 30 foods that will naturally lower weight. So we can ask the writer to go out and find the top 30 foods. And then from that, we can ask them to find maybe 30 recipes based on each element that will lower weight loss or help people to lessen their weight. So the goal here is to give people direction. Now, like we showed you earlier, where's to find vendors, you can use that data. For example, you can go to amazon.com like I showed you in video number five and you can do research about vendors, but not only that, you can take a look at what their book is all about. You can get some ideas about that and you can insert that into here. But what I'm trying to tell you is you have to give the article writer some guidance as to what they need to do. And then you give it to them and they have that right guidance. Then they can create a wonderful report, a wonderful ebook that could easily also be converted to a video. So let's talk about sites where you can go to. There are several sites that I've used personally, and one site is called fiverr.com. That's F I V E R R.com. Now fiverr.com basically allows you to find people to create work for you, whether it's graphics, writing videos for you, audio, music, business, or anything else for you. you. You literally can find just about everything at fiverr.com. Now fiverr.com allows vendors to basically create services for you for $5 each. Now you can typically add on to that. So for example, if we go through here and we want them to maybe do some business, actually we'll, we'll get them to do some articles and blog posts. And what I normally do is I try to do something like the seller level. New sellers, I typically avoid. I like to do top rated sellers or level two or even level one. That's fine. So let's just to choose that. See what we get. Do English language. So now what you can see is you are left with the vendors that have really high ratings, all right? So what I would normally do is I would normally sort that by this and then I would look at the top, find the person that I want that fits what I need and then I would contact the top three people and whoever gets back to me the fastest, that's a good test to figure out if they are reliable, if they're excited, or not. If they take like 24 to 48 hours or more to get back to you, just ignore them, move on. Find somebody who responds quick and who actually writes accurately. So if they respond and their grammar is not clear and correct, then move on to the next person. So what you're trying to do is a vetting process, which allows you to figure out which freelancer is good or not. Now, keep in mind that it's not always going to cost $5. So you obviously will need to give the outline to that freelancer and ask them, hey, how much is it going to cost? Now, if you take a look at some of these article gigs, let's click on this one here. You'll see that they have different options. So for the $30 premium, you can have somebody research and write up to a thousand words, two revisions, five focus keywords, and within two days delivery. So what you could easily do is you can get somebody to write your report or your ebook, and then you take that script and then you go find somebody under the video section and you ask them to read 
the report or ebook and turn it into a video. So if you look for spokespersons and testimonials, you can go up here, video animation spokespersons at the top. If you go over here, you can find people that fit the demographics. And that's the reason why we did a demographic research on Facebook audience insights. This allows you to pick and choose the demographics, which fits your audience best, and then create a video course by having them read the script that the article writer created. So now you have a report and a video that you can give away for free. And by adding video, what it does is it actually increases the perceived value of your product because now you have video and you have a report which you could ask somebody to add images to create into an ebook. So that's literally how easy it is to use fiverr.com to get somebody to create an article or report or ebook and then convert that into a video course. Now, fiverr.com is not the only place that you can go to. There are other sites. There's another site called guru.com. This is another great site that we have tested and used. And of course, a, another site is called upwork.com. That's upwork.com. And this is another great site to find freelancers who are willing to write for you and really high quality ones at that as well. So that's it. Remember, outsource as much as possible because this is your business and you should be spending time marketing your business, not actually working inside of your business. Because let's be honest, if you are not well versed in article writing or video creation and you try to create that product, most likely it's going to take more time and time is money and the value may be lower if you are not well versed in that area. So at the end of the day, it's just cheaper and better to outsource. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome back. This is video number eight, and we're going to talk about the first strategy for building your list. Now, obviously this is what we have built up to this point, and we know that we are going to approach vendors. Now, before you approach vendors and try to get them to say, yes, I will put your offer on the thank you page, you want to do a few things. Now, this is not necessarily required, but this is going to help you get more yeses. So once you have everything in hand, what we highly recommend that you do is you set up your product on a real sales page. Now you might be thinking, oh, this is so hard to do. But in reality, what I recommend that you do is taking what you learned in the previous video about getting a script written, finding a video spokesperson on Fiverr to read that script. All you have to do is you can do the same thing. Just get a script written and you can find somebody like an, a copywriter to write a, a very, very short script that explains what your product is all about, how it's beneficial, what it offers, and just give it to a video spokesperson, get them to create the video, then upload that video onto a sales page with a buy button. And you can create buy buttons super easy via PayPal. Now, if you have any problems, you can get somebody else to create your sales page, but it's really not a complex process. The reason why we want to do this is because we want to put your product out in the public so that the public can see that you are actually selling this product. Like I said, it's not required, but what it does is it bumps up the perceived value of your offer. So when you actually approach vendors, you can say, Hey, this product is actually being sold for $47, but I'm going to give it to your subscribers, your customers for free. And it's going to be a win-win situation for your buyers, for you, because your buyers are going to be much happier. And then it's a win-win situation for everybody. So there are many different ways of approaching vendors, which we'll 
talk about in just a second and how to approach these vendors with your specialized offers. So we're going to discuss what you must do and what you must avoid doing at all costs that can actually cost the deal. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. Okay. So this process does take time. So a quick warning to you, but it's better to actually do this before you create your high value offer. And you really should be focusing more on this process than just actually creating the product itself. That's why I put so much emphasis on outsourcing your high value offer to somebody else. So you can focus primarily on this because really what it comes down to, this is very, very similar to joint ventures, building relationships and then getting vendors to say yes. It's very, very hard nowadays to approach a vendor or even approach somebody to get them to promote your product. And you really have to have a relationship or a connection between you and them typically before they will say yes. Now there are different ways to get them to say yes. And we'll talk about one way in this particular video, and then we'll talk about a different way in the video number nine. So this is basically the process. Step one is to create a connection. Now, how do you do that? Well, there are several different ways to do that. And the first way is of course, to buy their product. So in this case, if we're going to do something on weight loss, specifically related to foods, then what we want to do is we want to find all the vendors that are not directly related to weight loss foods, but maybe they offer things like weight loss exercises or things that are not directly in competition that they would more likely say yes. So you can buy their product or you can be their affiliate and promote their product, which we'll talk more about in the next video. So you got to have that connection. A lot of people feel like they approach people or as many people as possible and get them to say yes. It's better to approach 10 people or five people that are that you've done your research on and that you've created a connection with than just blanket trying to approach 50 or 100 people. At the end of the day, quality is more important than quantity. So make that connection. And this connection, as you can see, can be built over time. Step number two is building a relationship with them, talking with them, subscribe to their newsletter. Every time they email out, respond with something actually interesting. Now, one mistake that I see a lot of people make is when a vendor emails out and they respond with, Hey, will you buy my stuff or will you promote my stuff? That's a big no, no. You do not want to do that. You want to build a relationship with them instead of saying that, which is what everybody else does respond with something like, Hey, I really like your newsletter or, Hey, I really thought that this was thought provoking and you know, so build a relationship with them, email them. You can even sell their product as an affiliate. If you make sales for them, which is what we'll talk about in the future videos that will actually get the vendor's attention. Now that's a different story for a, a different video, but really want to do is just build a relationship with them. And as you know, relationships take time to build, but if you can just get one yes from a big enough vendor, a lot of times that's just good enough. And then once you have that one vendor say yes, then getting other vendors to say yes is actually an easier process after that. Step three, approach them when the time is right. After you have built that relationship, you see why I want you to kind of do this process before you even create your high value offer, because this process does take time and most people are not willing to do it. And because of that, that leaves open a large amount of opportunity. So for those of you who are the 1% action takers out there, it does take time but it's going to be worth it in the long run. So step number three, approach them when the time is right. Step four, email them, but offer value. 
every email or reply to them, it must be offering value. You don't want to ever get into this mindset of, you owe me, you need to promote my product, or you need to do this or that. That is the wrong mindset. And even if you feel wholeheartedly about that, don't ever get into that mindset because unfortunately what's going to happen is if you get mad or you, you're mean or you spam them, for example, then what will happen is they're just not going to respond. So step five, don't get mad, don't refund, don't be mean or anything because highly likely if they're an authority in their niche, they are more likely to know other vendors. So if you get mad at them, they're going to tell their friends or it might just come up in conversation. And if that's the case, then it's going to be hard to break in to that niche. Does that make sense? So that's the process. Very simple, very easy to do. As far as emailing them and trying to figure out what you should email them, just say, hey, you know, just respond as a friend, as you would talk to a friend and go from there. And then you can say, hey, I, for step three, you can say, hey, I've got a product, not directly in competition with yours, but it's something that I really believe your buyers would really, really love. And I'm selling it for $47, but I really love your stuff and I really feel like this is something that's gonna help your buyers. So I was wondering if you wanted to, I'm only gonna offer these to a few vendors and I really like your stuff. So I wanted to offer that to you. So you see where we're going here because you have that connection, you're more likely to say yes, there's no guarantee, but they're more likely to do so if you've done the proper research. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. And I'm going to talk about a different way to create a connection without really building that close friend relationship. And in this type of strategy, you're going to be able to get on their radar quicker and they're more likely to say yes. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome back to video number nine. And this is the second strategy to building your list. And this deals with being an affiliate of the vendor that you're about to approach. And this is a great way to get vendors to say yes, because if you think about vendors, their motive and their goal is to make sales, right? So as an affiliate, you will be promoting them and making sales for them. And whenever you do that as a vendor, the affiliate oftentimes becomes high priority. So in that light, you can kind of get away with not building a relationship initially rather than doing what we talked about in the previous video, which works great. Doing this route allows you to kind of bypass that and build a relationship very, very fast. And I'll explain in just a minute how you can go about doing this. So getting vendors to say yes can be tedious and time consuming, however, very well worth it. However, that said, there is another way to actually get them to come to you and get them to beg you. So this works really well. This is something that we have tested over time and works. So while you're doing what we talked about in the previous video, we recommend that you go ahead and start making some money as an affiliate. So while this is a topic for a different day and we can talk about affiliate marketing day in and day out, we really want to focus on this and at least a brief overview of what you should be doing. So you can easily find products within a niche that you're in that have affiliate programs. In fact, in video number five, where I show you how to go to a site called clickbank.com or even jvzoo.com, both of these sites are sites where you can find products to promote as an affiliate. So 
in doing so, you can actually promote the vendor's product. And if you start making some sales, a lot of times you will become high priority on that vendor's radar. They see you making sales for them. If you contact them, more likely they're going to listen. And especially if you make sales for them and the, let's say for example, you're offering the product that you created as a bonus. So if they purchase and they meaning the buyer, if the buyer purchases, let's say for example, the vendor's product through your affiliate link, a lot of times the vendor will give you such as 50%. Now, not only are you making money and building your own list, you're proving to the vendor, hey, people are actually buying through my affiliate link to get my bonus or high value offer for free by buying through my link. So it's proven. And when you approach the vendor, you say, hey, I've already made some sales and I'm giving away this offer that I normally charge, you know, $47. And you can point them directly to the sales page that you set up that we talked about previously. Now I've done this several times. And the reason why I say this works is it because it works literally for us. We've done this as an affiliate where we have promoted a product that we created that is related to the vendor's product. And not only is it making sales for us as an affiliate, you become on the radar of the vendor. So the vendor sees you making sales for them. They are actually more likely to contact you. Or if you contact them and show them that you are making sales, you literally can bypass the making a relationship with them because that essentially builds an instant relationship with them. So in doing so, a lot of times you can actually approach them and say, hey, I'm already making sales for you as an affiliate. I was wondering if you would be willing to promote this related offer to your list. Or I normally sell this for $47 and you can point them to your sales letter. But I'm offering people who buy through my link, my affiliate link to buy from you. And I'm giving it to them for free. So why don't you just put this on your thank you page and I'll offer the rest of your list of people who buy your product, this product for free. So you've already built kind of a instant relationship with them and they're more likely to say yes. And we've tested this time and time and over and over again, and it works. And it literally bypasses what we talked about in the previous video. Now, affiliate marketing, it does take time to make some sales. But at the end of the day, it's easier to get people to say yes. In fact, if you can get somebody in that niche to say yes, you can approach a different vendor who is within that sub niche and say, hey, I offered this to so-and-so. They decided to add it to their thank you page. I was wondering if you would be willing to do the same, you know, and I can be an affiliate for you as well. They are more likely to say yes. So this is another great way to get the vendor's attention. So how do you do this? How do you actually put this in practice? Because we talked about the what's and the why's. Let me briefly talk about the how's. And then later on, I'm going to talk about how you can find the vendor's email address and contact information so that you can contact them. Now, in order to do affiliate marketing, we recommend that you make a video, perhaps an honest review that is reviewing the vendor's product. So a lot of times you can actually contact the vendor and say, Hey, I would like to promote your product as an affiliate, but I need to have the product in hand so I can do an honest review and I can start making sales for you. So what we recommend that you do is you make that honest review. You upload it to YouTube and you optimize it for the keyword vendor product name review and bonus. Now, obviously you replace the vendor product name with the actual product name. And then you put review and bonus in the title and in the description. 
you upload it to YouTube, and then you become an affiliate and you promote it as an affiliate. You could say, here's a review of the product. This is the pros, here's the cons. Now, we really like the product, but we feel like you would get more value if you had this product. And this product would be your product. So you could say, I normally sell it for $47, as you can see here, point to the sales page. But if you buy this vendor's product, I will give it to you for free if you buy through my affiliate link. So that would be the video. And then of course, to get it ranked, you can buy some backlinks from fiverr.com to get it ranking. Backlinks meaning you would get some links linking directly to your YouTube video. So with that said, let me show you how to find the vendor's information so you can talk to them, get access to a complimentary copy of the product so that you can do the review, and then you can start that relationship. So as far as finding the contact information for the vendor itself, a lot of times when it comes to affiliate programs, if you go to the vendor's affiliate program page, a lot of times it'll be listed there or they'll ask you to fill in your email address, which then they'll email you affiliate materials that you can use to promote their products. And a lot of times they'll provide you with their best contact information because they want to provide as much support as possible to their affiliates. Now, let's say for example, clickbank.com. If you go to the affiliate marketplace, you type in a keyword. Let's say for example, diabetes. And if we scroll down and we sort by gravity, gravity, as I said earlier in video number five, it allows you to see whether a product is actually making sales or not for affiliates. So if we scroll down here, we can see this one has a high gravity. So let's open this one here and this one here. So typically you can find the affiliate information at the very bottom of the page, of the sales page. So for example, this sales page here, if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see there's an affiliate page here. So if we scroll down, we can see that they do provide some information and there's a contact right here. So you can fill this in. You can say, hi, I'm so-and-so. I'm interested in selling your product. Please contact me here. So simple, simple email just opens the line of communication. It gets them to contact you. And then same thing here. So we open this product here, which is a paleo diet. If we scroll down to the bottom, we can see affiliates. We click on this link and then we're sent to here. So it says to sign up for our affiliate program and get updates, blah, blah, blah. Fill in your email here. You can fill in the email here. They're going to send you something. And typically the email that they send it from is going to be their email if they want you to make as many sales as possible. So as you can see here, okay, so the, it, there's a link here. This is already an affiliate. If we click here, so sometimes you have to investigate a little bit, but if you scroll down, you'll eventually see an email somewhere. So it says, Here's a contact for preferred affiliate support. So you can say, if you need anything at all, contact our affiliate support team at here. So you can contact this. And if you do get a support team and you don't really get access to the vendor or the owner, you can build a relationship here and then ask to speak to the actual owner. Now, oftentimes, most of these clickbank.com products, most of these are actually the the affiliate support team or the customer support team is actually the vendors themselves. So that gives you kind of a direct access to the product vendor themselves. And then of course you can build that relationship as an affiliate. And of course it's an easy way in. With that said, congratulations. You have reached the end of this video course and I hope you have enough information that you can use.
and understand how the system works and how you can utilize this to literally build your list on autopilot. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much.